Locker rooms, spent a lot of time, you know, in elite sport. Locker rooms are some of the most honest rooms on the planet. There's some really good honest rooms, but it's one of them. People are naked. They're made fun of. Everybody knows what you're able to be, uh, what you're capable of, and whether you're bringing it or not. If you're blowing it in your preparation, if you're a disaster in your life, you're called out, you're supported, you're loved on. It's like there's all of the experience in locker rooms. Now, again, you can get a lot of trouble because there's some locker rooms that are pretty damning and you know, and like really awful. But mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The, but there's the potential for it to be great. Coaches' rooms, where all, all the assistant coaches and the head coach and where they get together and team up and have conversations, it's one of the most dishonest rooms. There's protection. They're on two-year contracts. One person really holds the power, whether people stay or go. Their jobs are directly related to how well the athletes do. And so there's, you, there's a lot of blaming and finger pointing in those rooms because they're trying to keep their job. They're trying yeah. to do the thing that they love. And it's not me, it's not my coaching, it's a kid. And so the dishonesty in some rooms is nauseating and the honesty in other rooms is so refreshing. Dude, it's almost like when there's more to lose, there's more falsities, there's more fakeness with people when there's more on the line, essentially. Well, it's the likelihood that you would want to deflect, you know, and not, not be accountable. So then, so then real power only comes from peace because if you're at peace and knowing who you are and knowing that you're great and not caring if you get, well, I mean, I don't know if that'd be possible to not care if you get fired, but, but to really know who you are, know your own value at any level of sport or life, doing the work on that could probably diffuse the fakeness in any environment whatsoever. Yeah, when, when somebody walks in that's really about it, whatever yeah. it is for them. Yeah, and they it, know it themselves. It holds up a radical mirror to everyone else. And so um, this is like, I've spent the last, I've never really had a formal job where I've had um, a, a nine to five thing. I've been an entrepreneur, solopreneur, entrepreneur most of my life. And I never wanted to make a decision. Like I don't come from wealth and I want to be successful on a lot of different variables. Financial success is, is cool too. You know, it's like spiritual health, emotional health, financial health, like there's lots of variables. And so I never wanted to make a decision where um, I had to take a job because I didn't have enough money in the bank account. So I didn't buy a lot so that I could say, uh, hey, why don't you go fuck yourself? This isn't cool. And so there was, a, there was my first moment in pro sport. <laughs> and so the coach brings me in. Um, the GM wanted me there. And I, this is a radical mistake. I didn't even realize it. The GM wanted me there, signed a contract, but I didn't know that the head coach actually was not involved. And so it was in hockey. Um, the guys are uh, skating. He, he asked me to come to practice. The guys are skating. He, he sees me come into the ice rink blows a whistle, all the guys come to center ice. He then bags them, gets them sweating, gets them like agitated after practice. And then, uh, you know, sends them into the locker room and he says, Mike, come on in. And so uh, as we're passing through the locker room and guys are taking off their gloves and kind of unlacing their, their boots. He says, hey boys, uh, stay, take your gloves and your, your boots off, but stay in your gear for just a second here. And guys are like, what the fuck? Like smelly, agitated, like, what are we doing? So he, he brings me into his office and he says, um, chit chat for like three minutes, pleasant. And I'm like, what are we doing? Why are they there? This is weird. This is my first kind of gig in pro sport. He goes, all right, Mike, let me introduce you to the boys. Brings me out and he says, um, all right, everybody, this is our shrinker. And um, <laughs> if you're fucked up in the head, he's your guy. And he turns to walk off. And I thought, I just got fucking done up. Like, oh my, this is the moment. What am I gonna do here? And so as he's walking halfway, uh, this is the off access kind of punk in me, as he's about three steps away, um, I say, hey coach, door's open for you anytime. And I was for sure thinking I was gonna get turned, he was gonna turn around and be like, hey dude, we've had enough of this shit. I didn't want you here anyways, Puss, you know, uh, buzz off. And um, I needed the money, I needed the job, but I needed to know that I could back myself more. And, um, then the rest took care of itself. The boys started hooting and hollering. Uh, one guy takes the Gatorade kind of thing, throws it up and then down. And they're like, you know, they loved all of it and instantly slid right into the, you know, the, the, the culture that was yeah. there. And so it's one of my highlights in sport. And it was my first kind of almost blow the whole thing up.
And so it's cool when you when you can be a little punk rock, when you can speak truth to power. Yeah. And it's hard. I find it really hard to do. Yeah, because the price that's paid that you talk about with FOPO is we actually lose our authenticity. We lose ourself. If which you, what an ultimate price that is. If you play the second game to be approved rather than to be about it. Yeah. 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 We, you lose yourself. And you know what? You're giving yourself to them, which is their approval, which yeah. is pretty dangerous. Yeah. And you're also losing the core essence of your own expression, which sucks yeah, to put sucks. it in simple terms. Yeah. Check out some of the videos on this screen that are perfectly curated based on the video you just saw. Make sure you follow me and I'll see you in the next video.